Kia ora. Um, my name is Catherine. This is uh, a floss tube extra. Um, I'm going to um, be talking about. <laughs> I'm going to be talking about my um, parcels that arrived from Mexico. <sighs> what I've just done is I started by saying hello in Tere Tereo, Maori, um, and then I just slipped into in into Spanish. <laughs> So I'm starting again. So anyway, the first one I'm wearing is um, a top from the community from Purepecha de Comachuen. Maybe that's where I went wrong because I was reading this card, which is in Spanish. Um, in this part of Mexico, they don't call them huipiles. So um, in Spanish, which is probably not a Spanish word. It comes from one of the many languages. Um, in Mexico, but Wipil is, is the name for the blouse. Um, so it would be one Wipil, two Wipiles. But this is one angle. This is un one angle, two one angles. Um, so it's just a different language, a different way of saying things, but it's the same sort of loose, loose top that women wear. It's beautifully made. Um, the fabric itself is made on a floor loom, I believe. And then it's hand um, decorated with cross stitch. And it looks exactly the same on the front and the back. So it's interchangeable, which is actually quite good. It will hopefully stop it from wearing out too quickly on the front, which is probably where it gets the most wear. Um, beautiful, beautiful work. The reverse is stunning. It kind of looks like, almost like abstract art or some African textiles. It's, it's just got that vibe for me. It's very beautiful. Um, I'm not going to translate the whole card, but I did like that Wanasi is the name of this company and it refers to the um, pine nut from, which is a, a significant like object in these communities. And it tells me the, the name of the artisan that made my top as well, Paula Elias, which is great. I'm super pleased. I love the idea of um, buying beautiful things, but also supporting um, indigenous cultures and supporting women-run enterprises and helping ensure that their um, their knowledge is not lost. So whilst there is an economic, an economic imperative for them to co keep producing, they will continue producing, and then they, the knowledge will be passed down to, from generation to generation. So that's all fantastic stuff. So that's this one. The next one that I'm going to show you is by a company called Iqpatl. And I'm, right, let's see if I can figure it out. So this is the blouse. I wore it to work for four days running. I, I wear my clothes quite for quite a few days. I think it's more sustainable to not wash things too often. But I will quite often air things. I'll hang them in the, uh, on a hanger and then just air it. I think... Um, Washing your clothes daily is a, a construct from um, detergent companies. Just my thoughts. So anyway, I wore this over four days, and my husband was like, mm, maybe three is enough. I was like, nah, it's fine. Very beautiful. Um, this is a running stitch. But look at the details. It's got beautiful birds and flowers. Look at this tiny little bird, another tiny little bird. Look at this beautiful flower got these um i don't know if they're deer i think they're deer actually someone said rabbit but i'm thinking i'm leaning more towards deer because they're sitting down in a deer like fashion to me um some plants just very very gorgeous very beautiful again it is reversible i think this might be is there a swan there somewhere um yeah swans here and here i mean it's just stunning it's traditional construction um if you're lucky enough to get hold of one of those like folk uh, sewing, um, the from any part of the world really, it's amazing how different different parts of the world have evolved very similar construction techniques, and it's the same. It's all blocks, blocks, and then they usually have a triangular shape here, which is made from a block as well, um, like a square block. Um, so yeah, very cool. I'm very happy with this. Um, it has French themes, which I was amused to find out that actually the French call these English themes. 
um, right, pesky light. So the French seams are when you sew and then the sewing is covered. Um, there's a variety of styles that you can use. I think these are French, um, but you can also use Hong Kong seams. Anyway, it makes things look very smart on the inside and um, it's not going to um, unravel. So very beautiful. I will put the name of this company at the bottom as well in case there's another someone in the channel that um, collects textiles as well. And finally, because I have, I've got this organized and I lost the name of three of the companies. But anyway, there's this beauty. Now this fabric is factory made. It's got a kind of creamy, um, yeah, that sort of creamy color. And they call it manta. Um, so it's, it's kind of coarse. I mean, maybe you would call it calico, but it would be a thin calico. But anyway, it's very beautiful. I had thought, I saw somewhere, and I haven't investigated yet, that I had seen somewhere where they talked that this was called Portuguese stitch. So that's interesting. I'll have to look it up as well. It's kind of a chunky stitch. It's made with cotton, um, cotton yarn as well. Anyway, I think it's beautiful. I really would like a long one. They, they make dresses of these as well, but these are very pricey, so I was being sensible. Um, and it's got details under the arms as well. So they're kind of reversible, both sides are the same, but this is the underarm detail, which is just stunning. Um, the colors are sort of fuchsia pinks and purples, but they're kind of somber purples. Um, although there's like, it's a shocking pink, it's a somber shocking pink. I love it. Um, these sorts of tops do make you look bustier. I mean, no, that's not true. If you're busty, it shows. That's probably fairer. I'm quite busty, so. But I love it. I think it looks beautiful. Um, the the person I bought it from, who represents a, a community of makers, is called Yolo Alvarado MX. MX. So um, her name. So Yolo is short for a name in their language. Um, Alvarado will be her surname and MX for Mexico. I'll put the details at the bottom. Very beautiful. I'm super happy about this. I will wear it and then at some point when it gets a bit worn, I will put it to my collection. It fits very beautifully. So that's that. Okay, and then my friend sent me a lovely gift. So this is not a wipil, this is a blouse with um, some traditional stitching, but it's flowers. It's not, um, it's not a wipil, it's just a modern, a modern shape blouse. It's quite tight fitting, that's on purpose, and it's got a crochet edging. It looks very pretty. I can see that one of my daughters probably has her eye on this, but my friend sent it to me, because she's lovely, and she was being super kind, which did kind of make me feel guilty, because she was do already doing me a super favor. I'll just have to go to Mexico next time. Um, so that, I am disappointed because I can't find what this company is called. I need to look it up. It's just beautiful. So this is um, sort of factory produced fabric. I suspect it's either cotton or a cotton polyester mix. Almost like bed sheeting sort of fabric, just or, or a school uniform, like um, blouses for a school uniform type fabric. I mean, it, it feels solid. I mean, I think it's cotton. Um, it's because because it's um, it's artisan made. It doesn't have like a tag. That's all. So I'll, I'll show you some of the things. So this here is a running stitch embroidery, and it's hand stitched. This edge is machine stitched, and they actually use different styles of threads. This is very flimsy. I think this is um, it's machine made and it's quite a flimsy thread and it's quite hairy. This is very different in appearance. Um, you can see this band here. It's again machine made. It's quite intricate. Um, and then you have this this central bit here. It's hand stitched again. So it's a mixture of hand stitching and machine stitching. I think the machine stitching, when I say machine stitching, I'm pretty certain that they use um, like Singer treadle sewing machines. 
and it's not just Singer, but you know, you'll recognize the brand Singer, but there, there's lots of brands. Um, and actually, even now, they are produced and sold in Peru. So I suspect it's the same in Mexico as well, because there are some parts of the country where electricity is intermittent. Um, I mean, even I growing up, even now when I go to on holiday, it depends which part of Peru you're at. Uh, you know, you could end up with like, losing electricity, losing power one night. It, you know, it is what it is. Um, so anyway, it's very beautiful. It's got a lovely detail on the side. I, I just love these details because they're kind of unnecessary but so gorgeous. This is under the arm. And on top of loving this, I just love this little detail. I mean, it's so whimsical. Like, does it add anything? No, it doesn't, but it totally does. It's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. So anyway, thrilled about that. Um, and then it has this, um, as if my bust wasn't prominent enough, this flounce sits right there. And of course I am gonna wear it because I think it's absolutely stunning. But this bit is quite stiff, so it kind of sits a little bit funny. But when I see women, I mean, I think it will soften over time, but I do see women and, and it does kind of stick out a little bit. But it's just stunning. I mean, gosh, I'm totally going to wear this to work. Very beautiful. I need to find out the name of the region. I am disappointed in myself because I was not organized enough, but never mind. And then I have this other one. Again, it's the same sort of construction where you have, it's all square pieces, and um, I have started making, and I've, it, it got truncated, a, a sort of English smock. So if you're interested in textiles, you'll have come across the English smock from the olden days. Um, and it's the same construction. You've got these rectangles, and this, although it looks like a triangle, it's actually a square. It opens up into a square. So you used to be able to sew by tearing fabric. It was all different tears with different measurements. So I think that's quite interesting how it's gone to lots of different parts of the world. And if you look into um, Eastern European sort of blouses, you know, those beautiful blouses with enormous bands of um, cross stitch and stuff. And I am making something inspired by that for myself. Um, it's the same construction. It's all like strips and lengths and squares and rectangles. And then they have this triangle here to, to you know, make sure that you can move your arm. Um, the fabric is factory made, so it's commercial, um, and the embroidery is with this red thread, which is more cotton-like than the others, and it is machine stitched. But it's, you know, it's not computerized, it's hand machine stitched. You know, someone will be guiding, and it'll be a pedal machine, I think. It's very beautiful, very, very striking. And again, it's the same on both sides, sides, front, and back. So it's interchangeable. And um, although I have forgotten the name of these two companies, they are produced by communities that are organizing themselves. Um, at least the companies that I am following, I mean, there's a mixture, but at least the companies that I'm following that I've bought from, it's someone from the community that's usually younger and digitally savvy that have an Instagram account and they advertise that way. And so they have lives, they go traveling, you know, um, selling in Mexico City and other parts as well. Uh, but it is, it, it's, it, it's probably the most direct way to help a community rather than have someone buying for a market. Um, I mean, it's complicated because I'm not in Mexico, but it appears to be like the most direct way to, to help a community. Um, so that they get the most profit. So again, none of these um, were cheap, and that seems about right, because they're handmade, um, they're beautiful pieces, really well made, um, and done by hand. So totally worth it, and I love them, and I'm so glad that they're in my coll collection. <coughs> and the final thing that I got is, thanks to my friend Donahi, who put me in touch with someone that sells these, I love this, um, and when you buy it, you actually don't get a blouse, but you just get the square that has been embroidered, um, and so the idea is that I will do the hemming. I will hem the bottom, 
and I will sew the sides and hem the, the sleeve area. Super straightforward to do and then I will cut the, I will cut the hole for the neck. It's very beautiful. And the way they do these is that they actually embroider it on the reverse. And what I was saying on my other channel, so this is the side that embro they embroider on. Um, and then when they're finished, they flip it, and that's when they can see the full picture of what they've created. Um, I think the, the colored flosses are probably rayon. Um, quite often when you buy things from Mexico, it might say silk, but what they mean is like silk-like. So it's usually a rayon. Um, and I do like to have natural materials, but I also think it's not my job to tell the um, communities how to how to sew. They, they can figure themselves out. Um, it's very fetching and very beautiful. I will get around to doing this. I just need to find some time from all the other things that I do. Now, I did come across, soon after I bought this, I, because my friend helped me buy it, it was actually the most reasonable of all the items that I purchased. Um, I don't know if it was made in an artisanal artisanal way or mass produced because I have since found out that they um, they now have computerized machines that can make 20 of these at a time um, with a program which is kind of not ideal um, because there's normally factories that will benefit from that rather than the indigenous communities where these um, styles were developed I have no way of finding out though. But in any case, it is beautiful. And this is um, some sort of, um, I think it's cotton with lycra. It's got a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of stretch. Probably not a bad thing for someone of my age and size. But it's very beautiful and I love it. Um, okay, on to the little bits that I, I bought and that my friend sent me. So. I did not know that my friend was going to send me this, but she sent me this beautiful bag. Just stunning. Um, I do feel a tint guilty because postage ain't cheap from Mexico. Um, and things ain't cheap. But she was being super kind and lovely to me. And of course she did send me. Sorry to be disorganized as usual. She did send me a card and I've lost it. Now, how could I lose her card in the last five minutes? She sent me a card with the names of where things came from. So I'm going to try and find it in this like very unprofessional way that I normally do my videos. I am probably more tired than I realize because I have been at the stitching retreat. Okay, so this is the card that she sent me. Isn't it gorgeous? Right on my street, handmade um, by a company called Pew... Piuani, hecho a mano, handmade. Um, okay, so what she tells me is, <laughs> she was so generous. She was like, thank you for letting me be part of this adventure. <laughs> she, was, she had to faff around a lot, bless her. Um, she was great. A, a very dear friend that I met in England when our children were little. Um, okay, so the bag is from... Querétaro, and this is machine made with a rayon-like thread. Very, very stunning and beautiful. Super happy. I took it to the stitching um, retreat today. It was great. It, it fits a lot. Fantastic. Um, then there's some little bits and bobs here that I want to show you. So she, she sent me this little plate with a stand, and it's from... in Michoacán and it has a little stand because of course she knows that I love um, the Frida museums and I, you know, I'm, I'm fascinated by Frida as a woman as an, and as an artist um, I've been to Casa Su two or three times can't remember now um, but Angelica just, just my friend Angelica has just been so she sent me this key ring I love, I love the hairstyle, the like adornment. Isn't it fabulous? If only I dared wear stuff like that. I don't think I could though. Um, I'm not as bullshit as I think I am sometimes. Um, she 
sent me this fantastic magnet. So what I will say is, if you get a chance to go to Mexico, go. It's a fantastic country. The people are amazing. And the craftsmanship and the creativity of the country is just amazing. So this is Casa Azul, which was Frida's home. This is where she grew up. And then Diego bought it um, of her parents. And you can go and visit it. I mean, there's just so many lovely aspects to this house. Non, not least, their collection of cartoneria. Stunning. Very beautiful. And I'll explain a little bit about what cartoneria is. Um, so it's, it's basically um, toys and dolls and figurines made of, and piñatas made of cardboard or boxes, that sort of thing, papi mache, all that sort of thing. She also sent me this, and to be honest, when I see this, I think Guatemala, I don't think Mexico. But Mexico is not Guatemala simply for political reasons. They actually are very much a mixture of peoples. So maybe there is a group, an indigenous group in Mexico that does actually share heritage with Guatemalan people. Um, I really need to get, it's on my list, I want to get myself a Mexican um, textile book and a Guatemalan textile book. I almost bought the Guatemalan one from the Museo Ischel, which is um, a museum in Guatemala City. The book is not that expensive, but it's almost three times the, for the postage. <laughs> so it kind of hurts and I haven't done it, but my birthday's coming up, so I'm thinking excuses, right? I really need to stop it with the shopping though. Went to India. But anyway, it's very beautiful. I'm so, I super love it. I'm very happy. And this was an extravagance, but I did, you know, it was a whole year of shopping. These are my excuses. I'm sticking with them. Then there is a company called, ah, and on the ground, there's a company called Hilos Flojos, which can be translated as lazy threads or floppy threads, um, loose threads. Um, I bought these, they're all naturally dyed, which is completely up my street, I love it. Um, I think it's really good fun to do natural dyeing, but of course it is a, a huge part of the tradition of like Central and Latin American countries, like Peru, lots of natural dyeing in Peru now. It was kind of becoming a forgotten art, but it's been recovered, um, and it's the same in Mexico and Guatemala. So. They come with these floss cards, um, which are laser cut cardboard. Um, and I'll just show you the colors. They are very prim, which are kind of like, you know, Americans call it primitive. I, I would, as having lived in England for a long time, I would call it naive, not prim. But I love these two. I mean, indigo, right? Um, so they were lovely. And then, I've probably shown you this in the floss tube anyway. Here's again for your delight. And these are all the other prim colors that are actually from the floss, um, embroidery floss, so the, the six-stranded things. Aren't they absolutely stunning? And I love that they tell you what, um, what they've dyed it with. It's very good. For example, Palo de Brasil. This is Brazil wood. Like if you wanted to have um, a bit of fun. So Sempasuchil is, um, ah, I'm gonna forget. Um, it's not Calendula, it's the other one. Mexican. Oh, this is annoying, isn't it? If I, I'll put it at the bottom. But anyway, I do like that they, they tell you um, what they're made with. Cochineal, very pale. Um, but anyway, good fun. And I love that they're, um, you know how I feel about sustainable. These are paper, they're not plastic. They're little bands, so super great. Very happy with these. And of 
course, very beautiful bag, which means that it will always be kept safe um, and not get mixed up with all the other stuff. So very happy with it. I also bought, I mean, you know how I feel about mustard, right? I bought this four ply cotton yarn and I'm thinking of making myself that same top that I had before. I just need to weigh it, make sure I have enough. Um, but it's very gorgeous. This is too bright. It's actually not that bright. How much? It's probably, it, that's more like it. But it's very lovely. Four ply in cotton. And um, probably dyed with that plant that I can't remember now. And then I bought this indigo, variegated indigo, which initially when I bought it was it was to weave, but now I feel like it's too beautiful for my what will be quite crap weaving. So I don't know. I probably will wait. Um, but yeah, I really like this company again, owned by a woman. Um, I follow them on Instagram. I like what they do. So oh great. And finally. I bought these delightful pencil toppers. When I saw them, I was like, ah, these are not expensive because the postage ends up being expensive, but the product itself are these pencil toppers. They're blooming fantastic. The company is called Cartoneria Charlie with a Y at the end. Aren't they fantastic? These are with, made with papier mache. And look, a Mexican wrestler, just brilliant. And they're all fantastical, they're like, you know, um, like magic, magical realism in um, toys and decorations. Look at that. I have seen some skeletons that they sell. I probably will order them. I just need to get myself organized because I'm not sure how much I'm spending at the moment. It's all a bit ridiculous. And I do want to retire young. Um... But um, I don't plan to use these as pencils. I plan to just keep them as works of art hanging in my house. Yay, Mexico. Mexico is an amazing country. Go and visit if you can. Okay, so that's it. I will post the names of the companies that I remember. I hope you enjoyed that. If you're a collector of textiles or if you're a collector of handcrafts from the world, it would be super exciting to hear from you. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that collects textiles and things like this. Um, so let me know. Have a jolly lovely week um, and I'll probably see you on Thursday for the next costume. Kakite!